Hello friends, can you imagine an event taking place thousands of kilometers away from India have a significant impact on the climate of India? Yes, that's true. An event that takes place in the Pacific Ocean has a huge impact on the climate of India. This is the Pacific and here is India. So I am telling you that an event that's taking place here will have an impact on Indian climate as well, be it monsoon, winter or any other season. Yes, that's true. In today's lecture, we will try and understand how this thing will happen. For that, first of all, let's understand from where the equator passes. This is from where the equator will pass. Equator, if you don't know, is an imaginary line that passes through the center of the earth. This is very important because this is the region from where the events will take place and eventually impact the climate of India. Normally, what happens in the equatorial regions is you will find the trade winds. What are the trade winds? These are the winds that are present throughout the year. Permanent winds that are present throughout the year. But what is the direction of the winds? It's very important. The winds are known as easterlies. Because they come from east and go towards west. There's nothing else. They are known as easterlies because of the direction. So, they will be like this. Okay. This is the direction of the winds in both the hemispheres. This is how the winds will be on the equator. Now, this is the moment of the winds. Now, imagine this is how the winds are blowing. If at all anything comes in the path of the winds, what is going to happen to that? Of course, the winds will drive that thing along with their moment. Anything that will come in the way of the winds, the wind will move it along with its direction. The same thing happens here as well. As you know, this is the Pacific Ocean and there is water. What is going to happen is that winds will take the water along with itself. The winds going from east towards west will drive the water to the west. So, what I am trying to say here is that all the water from this region, from this region will be driven away towards this region by the easterlies. Clear? See, as you know this is the equatorial region and we have abundant sunlight in this region. Because of that, the water will get heated up in the central Pacific and the eastern Pacific because of the sun. Once the water gets heated up, there is the constant uh, trade winds that are present on the equator. So, because of the constant winds that are there present on the equator, they will drive the water away from the coast of South America towards Australia. So, the warm water that was present near this region will get driven away towards the Australian coast. And what is going to happen near the South American coast? Of course, the place will not be empty after the water is driven away. It will be replaced by the water from under the ocean. The water from below the ocean will start to come to the surface. That is known as upwelling of the water. So, at this place, we will have the upwelling of water and the water will be driven towards Australian coast. Clear? Now, take a look at this. Initially, we had warm water at this place. And because of the trade winds, the warm water was driven away towards Australia. So, the warm water will start to accumulate near the Australian coast. And we will have cold water near the Peru Chile coast or the South American coast. This region will primarily have now cold water and will have warm water accumulation near the coast of Australia. This is what takes place, what happens in the normal circumstances. This happens during the normal circumstances. During this time, what will happen is that the water near the Australia, because of it's getting warm, the air will start to rise due to convection. The warm air rises. It's less dense. So, it will rise, of course. And when it will rise, eventually it will cool down and there will be rainfall. The clouds will form. The cumulonimbus clouds will form and there will be rainfall near the Australian coast. 
and because of the cold water present near the Peru Chile coast or the South American coast, there will be aridity. As is evident from the fact that you will find the world's driest place in this region. Now, imagine something like this is not taking place in the Pacific. Or what is going to happen at that time? Of course, the things, the normal things will get disrupted. That is the case of El Nino. During the El Nino years, the trade winds or these winds that I have shown you are not strong enough to drive the water from uh, South American coast towards Australian coast. And because of that, there is no uh, warm water accumulation near the Australian coast. And that is why during the El Nino years, you will see more rain near the Peru Chile coast and less rain or drought like conditions in the Australian coast. This is about normal condition and El Nino. But how is it related to? Indian climate. For that, we have one more term that is more important is La Nina. El Nino is different, La Nina is different. During the La Nina conditions, the trade winds will become extremely strong. In case of El Nino, what happened was the trade winds were not strong enough. But in case of La Nina, the trade winds will become extremely strong and they will drive a lot of water towards Australian coast. So, there will be huge accumulation of warm water as compared to the normal conditions. And if more warm water is accumulated near Australia, more evaporation will take place, more air will rise and there will be heavy rainfall. This is how normal condition is different from El Nino and how El Nino is different from La Nina. The only difference between normal condition and La Nina is that during the normal condition, there is a normal trade wind, but in case of La Nina, the trade winds are extremely strong. Now that's understood how the El Nino and La Nina functions. Now, what is the impact that's going to have because of this? Take a look at this. This is the uh, situation of La Nina that I explained already. You can see this red region. It is already heated up warm water being driven towards the Australian coast. Because of this, what happens? There will be heavy rainfall. This is La Nina. The diagram here is of La Nina. Strong trade winds are driving these things towards Australian coast. And because of this, you will see accumulation of warm water. Now, we will take a cross-sectional look at this and see how this thing will impact the Indian climate. Take a look at this diagram first of all. This is a cross-sectional diagram of the same thing that we have learned. This is your South America. Australia and here take a proper look at the diagram don't miss this this is India and here we have Madagascar these are the arrows that show you the direction of the movement of air these are the cells the walker cells that are there now take a proper look at this and don't miss this concept this is the most important concept that will help you learn a lot about climatology and Indian monsoon when you look at the normal conditions, what was happening or La Nina conditions, the water was getting driven from this side to Australian coast. The same thing is happening here. You can see the change of the color. Here you see a bluish color and here the orange color. Because the water here is cold. Why? Because of upwelling. Due to upwelling, you will have less sea surface temperature in the eastern and the central Pacific. When the water will reach, uh, warm water will reach near Australia. Now, because, as I told you, the warm water will rise. The air is rising due to less density and forming clouds. These are the clouds that are formed near the Australian coast and they will cause rainfall. But what is going to happen after that? The clouds are diverging near the upper troposphere and eventually when the air will cool down, it will come down. Okay, it will subside. It will come down again as is evident from these arrows. When it will come down, it will create high pressure near these regions. And as you know, and if you don't know, then remember it. High pressure is associated with stability or dry conditions or no rain. You can use any term. Stability, dry conditions, no rain. Whenever the air will descend down, whenever the air will come down, it will cause high pressure in this region and there will be no rain at all. In this condition, that is where I was explaining you about the Peru Chile coast. That is the one branch. The next branch will go like this, 
and it will also descend down at some place. The place where it will descend down is known as Madagascar or Mascarene's High. Here again, the high pressure will develop. Why? Because of the descending down of the air. What happens during the summer season is that because there is uh, the IT season is over India or India has high conditions, high temperature conditions. High temperature is associated with low pressure. So in India, we will have low pressure. But in mascarines, we have high pressure. As you know, the wind will blow from high pressure to low pressure. So the winds will start to blow towards India. Correct? And because of these winds, we will have very strong monsoon. Why? Because the winds are blowing over the water bodies. And they will carry moisture with them, which will eventually cause rainfall in India. And there will be very heavy rainfall in case of La Nina years. That is how La Nina improves or uh, advances or causes more rainfall in monsoon season. This is the impact of La Nina on monsoon. Now, it is also having a very significant impact on the winter conditions as well. As you know, if there is a La Nina year, the winter will be severe. As you can see, already the winter season is becoming severe in the North Indian parts. Why? There are many conditions. First and the foremost, you can see because of the cold surface temperature, the trade winds become more strong. The cold surface temperature, high pressure, the trade winds become extremely strong. Trade winds when stronger will cause more cold conditions towards India. More uh, less temperature, the temperature will start to fall in India. Then there are some more concepts associated with the Lanina as well. That is the tropical jet stream, uh, subtropical jet stream and the polar jet. There is a modification of these jet streams as well. Of course, right now I cannot explain you the jet streams because for this to understand, you have to understand how the jet streams form and then only you will understand how they will get modified. But of course, there is a relation between La Nina and the jet streams as well that causes intense cold in the North India and more rainfall in the South India. More cold in North India and more rainfall in South India. That is all because of La Nina. So that's all about today's class. I hope you like the class and if you're preparing for UPSC, then an academy has got great offers for you at just Rs. 32,999 for two years and for three years at 42,999. If you want further discount, then use my code A, T and F and you will get more discount as well. See you next time. Bye-bye.